When I was 21, I was a hot mess. I was very overweight. I overconsumed crappy food. I drank too much. I smoked too much. I never moved my body. And my prospects in life were not good. I had dropped out of high school. I was a bartender at this dive bar. And I was hanging out with a bunch of sketchy people. That was my life. And I didn't think it was ever going to change. But something happened in my early 20s. And I finally got fed up with myself. And for some reason, I decided the change I needed to make was to lose weight because I thought that if I could lose weight, then I'll start dating better quality people and maybe my life will magically get better from there. This was my 20 something rationalization. So at that point, I decided that I was going to lose weight and I was going to do it by cleaning up my diet and exercising. I did it pretty slowly because I ate the majority of my meals at the bar that I worked at. I started ordering salads instead of french fries and burgers without the bun. And slowly but surely, I started cleaning up my diet. That was all well and good, but it was actually the exercise piece that completely transformed my life. And that's what I want to share and impart with you in today's video, because if you have ADHD, whether it's diagnosed or not, if you want to get control over the symptoms and get control over your life, I can almost guarantee 100% that if you start exercising or just moving your body every day, you will change your life because you will change your brain. And I will get into all of that in a second, but I just wanted to impart a very personal story that when I started exercising, everything changed for me. I built structure in my routine. I went back to school. I stopped hanging out with shady characters and I started to see progress in my life. And the more progress I saw, the more hope I had and the more I worked out, the better access I had to my executive functions. And it changed my life. I'm telling you, I will not be the person I am today if I didn't decide to change my life. My early 20s were completely vain reasons, which is totally a-okay. It doesn't matter what the reason is. It doesn't matter what the motivation is. It matters that you do it. And I get so many folks reaching out to me saying, how do I find the motivation to work out? And I got to tell you, you will not find the motivation to work out. You have to force yourself a little bit until you start to make momentum. From momentum, you will start to see progress. And from progress, you will build in your own motivation. So on that note, if you are one of the people that asked me for some motivation to start working out because you know how important it is, but you just can't seem to get yourself started, then this one's for you. Let's get into it. I too do not enjoy working out. However, I do love having worked out because there's a lot of benefits to it. The number one treatment next to medication and therapy for improving the symptoms of ADHD is exercise. At least like 20 to 30 minutes a day of sweaty exercise where you get some blood flow and oxygen to the brain. It lights up that prefrontal cortex where all our executive functions are. And usually for the next two to three hours following a good solid workout, you can enjoy a host of benefits, including improved focus and follow through. So I cannot stress enough how important it is for us to move our bodies every day. It is for everybody, but especially for ADHDers. If you struggle with any sort of cognitive dysfunction, studies are now showing that a lifetime of activity can delay the onset of Alzheimer's. I think walking is a beautiful form of exercise. You don't need equipment. You don't need to go anywhere fancy. You just go out your front door and Bob's your uncle. Bonus points, if you can do it first thing in the morning, where you expose your eyes to natural sunlight, which will help to regulate your melatonin production and improve the quality of your sleep. So if your sleep sucks, and it's not just because you can't get yourself to bed, move more. And trust me, if you get into a habit of walking at least three times a week, just for let's say 20 minutes at a go, you're going to feel better. You're going to have more clarity, more focus and follow through. And you might even lose some weight. If you have ADHD, just treat this as part of your treatment plan and part of your mental health regimen. Because if you go after it with the expectation that you're going to lose weight and it doesn't happen right away, you're going to get discouraged and stop. And you're also going to resent 
this time on your calendar more. So if you can adopt some sort of a regular movement, whether it's hiking with a friend or taking your dog out for a walk or doing something a little bit more vigorous, then you're going to see results. Like I said, you're going to have better focus and follow through. You're going to be in a better mood and you're going to improve your ability to self-regulate. I've talked about this in the past and I will link to some videos above. Self-regulation is a critical skill for ADHDers. It's something that we are not inherently good at because it is an executive function. If you are feeling overwhelmed, overstimulated, if you're feeling like your head's just going to pop off because you're so angry, go out for a 10 to 15 minute walk and I guarantee you will come back with a little bit more perspective. So do not sleep on walking because it is a power tool for ADHDers and anyone who wants to live a happy life. What is a form of movement that you enjoy and just start there three times a week, 20 minutes a day, do it for your mental health, do it for your physical health, but do not do it to lose weight and see where it can go from there. The other thing that I would recommend doing is making it fun and enjoyable. So for example, save that time to listen to your favorite podcast. And I am sure that your favorite podcast is it's the ADHD friendly show. And if it's not like, I mean, what are you doing with your life? But whatever your favorite show is, limit it to only listening to it when you go out for your walks. And you will start to look forward to your walks because you're looking forward to your favorite podcast. You got to position it in a way that sounds appealing. So instead of calling it a workout, call it your daily movement, call it your daily personal time, call it your daily time with the ADHD friendly show, whatever floats your boat. But it starts with reframing what you consider to be a workout. So make it fun, make it interesting, put it into your schedule, create structure in your day so that it gets done by putting your walking shoes by the front door or adopting a dog or pay a friend to go walking with you. Whatever you need to create structure and accountability to improve the chances of you remembering it is what you need to do to get this habit started. And once it becomes a habit, you will stop thinking about it. You will stop negotiating whether or not you wanna do it. You'll just do it. And then the next thing you know, you might actually start working out too. Oh, that's what happened with me. And the next thing you know, I was running. And the next thing you know, I was enjoying it and I was looking better and I was feeling better and my brain was behaving better. And all of a sudden I went back to school and I graduated high school and then I went to college and then I went to university and then I got married and then I got a real career. And I am the person I am today because I started walking. So hopefully that's a little inspiration for you to get motivated and get yourself outside. So that's what I got for you today. A little mishmash of insights. I hope there were some takeaways there for you. And if you enjoy these little snackable pieces of insights, then feel free to drop a question below or jump on my email list so that I can address your question the next time I do one of these. So on that note, guys, thanks for listening. Bye for now.